Hey, how you doing, fellow devs? It's Andre from Charles Games here back again, and now we will continue our tutorial on Charles Engine, and we will continue with interactive scene. Uh, we will make a fake Windows 98 retro background desktop with an interactive dock. How does that sound? So let's get into it. I hope you're intrigued. So first, let's create our scene. Uh, let's create a scene and let's call it our first interactive scene. And I promise this first will be easy. So we have our scene. First we need to initialize it. Let's go to Tools, Charles Games, Init, and we will go with a generic because we're not making dialogues. As you can see, the engine automatically put all the stuff we need there. We have a camera, we have the scripts folder, but most importantly, we have scene root, which is where every object we will be manipulating will have to go. Let's start with the background. I've already prepared some nice Vaporwave background here, it's this one, and it's just a JPEG or a PNG, I'm not sure. But I can just drag and drop it into the scene and it will automatically make it an object. So I have an object here with sprite render, that's the important part. When we are showing pictures in Unity and in Charles Engine, we need sprite renderers. And we can either drag and drop pictures or create a new object, put a sprite renderer there and then select an object like uh, that, uh, select the, the picture we want. We already have the background here, uh, I'll buy it as a little small, so let's use the Unity tools to enhance, 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 and we have a very nice Windows 98-esque background, we check out in the play mode, it's there, nice. But remember, we have to put it into scene root. So, second, we need our good boy. I've already prepared a picture of a dog. So I have a desktop dog here, so I'll just drag and drop the desktop dog right into scene root, and we have our desktop dog somewhere. Oh no, he's lost. Why? Because we're not working with layers. Charles Engine includes layers, so we have these order of layers here. So we can mess around with that. So we want the background to be always minus 3 and dog to be 1. So the higher the number, the higher the object will be in the layer system, right? So it makes sense. So we have our dock. Let's make it a little more uh, big. Okay, this is the, how I, I like my dogs big. So let's check out play mode. Yeah, dogs here. It's not interactive at all. Hmm, too bad. But first, let's add a text. So I'll select the dog button, and when I want to add text right into it, I can either use Control or Command Shift T, or I can go to Tools, Charles Engine, Actions, and Add Text. And here we are. We have text, which I can now move. As you can see, the text uh, is a child of the selected object and let's write something down. Click this dog pretty please. That will con pretty please. I think that will convince everybody to at least once click the dog. So we have the dog and as you can see here if you scroll down to text mesh pro panel I can change color of the of the text. I can uh, make it bold, uh, change font. It has a lot of different functions you can use to style your game. So we have the dog here, it's there with the text. Let's add the window we want to show after somebody clicks the dog. So let's go into it. I have a picture of a dog I want to show when I click the first dog. Oh there's too many dogs now. I hope you're try I hope you're making I hope you're following me. Uh, but let's go. We have a dog. I'll drag and drop here like a dog here. Nice. So let's add it to scene root. And I also have some Windows big, window background I want to give the dog, so I have it here. Let's make it larger. Nice. Okay, this will, this will be, go nicely with our dog. The picture, by the way, that's a Charlie. She's the favorite one uh, of our boss, of Lukash, so I hope he won't mind. I think he won't. So I have Charlie here. Nice. So this is Charlie, pixelated the third Charlie. So let's, let's style it a little. I don't like this look. Oh yeah, nice, like, like, make it look like a window. Yeah, I think we, we have a nice big video. We have a window. Yeah, we have a window here. So, let's add a button, you know, so a button to close the dock. I have a cross prepared right there. 
nice. Let's add it to the dock. Uh, and I have, let's give it order in layer 4, so it's up above everything. And we have it here. Nice. So, now comes the hard part. To make it all interactive. Oh, I was kidding. It's actually not that hard in Charles Engine. So first, we need to make our dock clickable. If we want to manipulate stuff in Charles Engine, to hide it, to show it, to you know work with it, uh, we need to add a CE game object, uh, which is this component we will use here. So I will select a dog, which is the object we will be manipulating, the big dog, Charlie here. So let's add component and let's add CE game object. As you can see, it has a default value set to true, the default value of initial visibility, which we don't want. When we run the scene, we want it hidden. So when we run the game and uncheck it, let's see what happens. Oh, we're good. It's not there. Nice. Only our good pixelated doggy here. Oh, that's a good boy. So, that works. Now we need to make our dog clickable. So let's select a dog. And, oh, in a scene mode, let's select the dog. And, you know, we have this tool here for that too. So let's go to Tools, Charles Engine, Actions, and Init Button. And it automatically adds all the stuff we need to work with button. So let's, uh, you know, let's talk about what the button does. First, we have a box collider here, uh, which delimitates the clickable area. It doesn't have to be box, there are different kinds, but box well suits our needs here. You can change it if you will. Let's change it uh, so we will be able to click the text. You see the boundaries here. It's very accessible and very easy to see what will gonna happen. So we have box glider here. We have hand cursor, which I can already show you. Shows the little pointy hand when you um, mouse over the dock or the object. So now watch, oh, it changes into hand. So that's what hand cursor does. And then we have event listener, the core of the button. It has three sections and we're interested in on mouse click. The events that will happen once we click the button inside the box collider go. We will add plus and here we want to, you know, make the action. So let's drag and drop dog here because dog's con dog, the object dog, contains CE game object which we will manipulate through the event listener. So let's drag and drop it. And we here we have uh, the list of accessible methods we can use. There are some Unity ones, but there is also our special ones that come with uh, Charles Engine. And we have a method that's called show. So let's add a method show. So now once we click this dog, it should show the another dog object. So let's try. Oh, that's nice. Let's click the good boy. Oh, it shows. Hey, Charlie. But, you know. I can hide it. I'm stuck in here forever. So, I think we'd better add a clickable closing button. We will do the same for Charlie. Let's get back to scene view and let's select the dog and the, do the cross here. The little cross here. Let's make it a little bigger, shall we? We need our program to be accessible. Now, let's do the same. Let's go to Tools, Charles Engine, Actions and Init button. We can use Control shift e or Command shift e but I just, pre I just like prefer doing things the old clicking way. So now, as we can see, it added box glider, it added a hand cursor and it, add and it added the event listener. Once again, we will add the event that, that is bound to happen and we will put dog here once again and we will go to the list of methods and add this time hide. Now, after we click the cross, it should hide the dog window. So let's try it. Let's click the good boy. Hey, Charlie here again. And now I can just click and click and click and click and click and click and click. But I can't because I have yet more to show you. Because what we want to do now is somehow end our scene. Suppose we will have a dedicated button to call our distant friend and then switch the scene. Sounds about uh, sounds uh, sounds like a nice assignment, right? So let's try. I have a phone picture here. Uh, here, desktop answer button. So I will just drag and drop it here. Move it to scene root once again. Really, I have to make sure it's all in the scene root, otherwise it won't work. Let's make it a little hard more now. Let's okay. Let's make it into a button. So let's use this time the shortcut. 
Control shift e and it will init the button the same way we are used to but I still need the notification window of somebody calling. I've already prepared it beforehand, but I could easily put it together at this moment, but this is just to save time. Let's put our notification here. Yes, that's nice. So let's make it to layer 5, so it's above everything. We can test it right in the scene view. And let's put it in the scene root. And let's add a CE game object, because we want to manipulate it, and let's set it to hidden. Right, there we go, and yeah, let's like the overlay should look somehow like that. Cool. Now let's go to the button and on the mouse click, let's drag and drop the desktop notification object and let's see, let's set it to the method show. So once again, we will run and we can click Charlie or we can click this button and now it is. Now what we want to do is to play ringing sound and also switch us to another scene, to a dialogue scene, which we made earlier, uh, after, say, three seconds. How do we do that? Well, we have tools for that in Charles Engine. Let's go to scripts for the first time ever. And let's create our first scripts object. Let's right-click, create empty, and let's call it sound. Let's tackle the sound first. Now we can add component. And uh, let's go to CE scripts, uh, which contains a lot of useful uh, little scripts that are prepared for your project. And we have a play sound here. We, will, uh, we can either drag and drop sound from the project window, or we can use this little uh, dialog pop-up box here. Let's make phone ring and let's make it looping. How do I play the sound? The same way I will manipulate objects uh, in the event listener, so I'll go to the desktop button, the, the phone button, I will go to the event listener and I want to run the sound after I click it. So I will drag and drop sound object here, I will, I will show the list of methods and I will click run, because I want to run the play sound once, uh, you know, once we are, once we are clicking the button. Yeah, it's all set, let's play and test it out. Let's see what happens, and now... Okay, I won't resist. Oh, hey there, Charlie. And now let's test it. And the sound's there and it's looping. The one last thing missing is to switch the scene. For that, we also have a special script prepared. So let's go once again to scripts, let's go to create empty, and let's call it switch scene. And let's add our object which is again in the CE scripts and it's called switch to scene. Here I will just select the scene I want to move to, which is our first dialogue scene, and I say fade to black. Just a little note here, I won't fill it now because I don't want that, but here we can jump right through the particular note with particular ID, which is really handy. But this won't suffice, I guess. Let's rename it, and here we go, because we want timer. So let's go once again, create empty, let's call it timer, and let's add component timer. We have a timer here, and what timer does, that once it's ran, it will count, and after the countdown, it will run an action. So what I want, two seconds delay, and after the timer ends, I want to switch the scene. So I will, again, drag the switch scene object into the timer actions, and I will select the method run. Now, the only thing missing is to run the timer, to start the countdown, which I will, again, use event listener for. So I'll go to the answer button, and I will click there, and I will add timer. So, you know, what should happen, and I hope will happen right now, is once you click the button, it will show the pop-up, run the looping sound, and then run the timer, which will, after two seconds, switch our scene. So, let's get into it. Let's go to game and watch our program unfold. But first, let's click the good boy. Oh, hey, there you go, Charlie. It all works, and now we are prepared to call our friend, presumably to talk about the picture of the dog we just saw. Hey there. Now I clicked. Hey there. Nice. Two seconds, and the scene switches, and we're here. Hello. Hey, how are you? Well, we haven't seen each other in a long time. We're there and the scene we wanted to switch to. So, there we go.
That's been interactive scenes in Charles Engine. There's a lot of more magic you can do, a lot of more scripts we have prepared for you to work with, but this is just the very basics of making your own interactive scene. But please, if you do, in include some dogs, because we all love dogs with the Charles Engine team. So, yeah, see you around, and I'm looking forward to seeing your good boys in your interactive scenes with Charles Engine.